John here with RipeWave Audio. And for this video, we're gonna do something a little different than we have with the uh, popular immersive formats Who's Winning series. We've been doing one every year. We did one this year. I'll put the link in here for you as well. But for this one, I wanted to go in a deeper dive with Oral 3D support. And the reason being is uh, it can be supported in different ways and uh, it, it's not always evident in the number of channels the processor or receiver is able to decode. Not all of them support all the speaker layouts that are available for the different variations of Oral 3D, and we aim here to cover them. Now, in the Immersive Formats Who's Winning video that we did recently, we talked about the uh, brands that are out there doing processors and doing receivers. We found that there's 127 active models out there, give or take now, since it's been a few weeks since we did that video. But uh, of those brands, uh, there were 18 brands that had Oral 3D support, 58 models within this. So, 46% of what is out there has Oral 3D support of some sort with an AV processor or receiver. With these, uh, we noticed that there was different adoption rates on this. Some of them were early adopters. Now, looking back at the slides here, companies like uh, Datasat and Denon and uh, JBL with their premium product, uh, Lingdorf, Marantz, Macintosh, Storm Audio, Theta Digital, and Trinoff were in this first wave, and then uh, Bryston came a little later. And then the recently, the last three years, we've had other brands come into play like Arcam, Audio Control, uh, Focal, Integra, uh, JBL with their uh, standard range that they actually produce themselves, Monoprice, Onkyo, Pioneer, and Yamaha. Uh, all just coming in the last few years. Of course, the Integra, Onkyo, and Pioneer flagships that are supposed to have this, I think we're still waiting on the firmware update that's supposed to be for them. Uh, but that should be coming within this year is that firmware update that gives you Oral 3D on those products. And we can see this chart again that you know the support for Oral 3D has only been growing over the years Per brand, we haven't seen brands really drop off, except for Lexicon, who's really just kind of exited the market. Harman uses their other brands like Arcam and JBL Synthesis to cover up uh, the processor receiver market. But yes, we see you know a good for as far as brand coverage, 64% of the brands that are involved in this market for processors and receivers are having oral 3D. This is where this video comes in. What versions of Oral 3D do each of these products support? There are different variants out there. Now, uh, there's also a five channel, a seven channel, but let's start with Oral 9.1 that came out in 2006, as well as Oral 10.1. And what these formats were, were on the ear level, five channels, three in the front, two on the side surrounds, no rear surrounds uh, with these formats that came out. And then they created a height layer, which they differentiate from top or ceiling, uh, wall-mounted speakers. And for these, they had the uh, front uh, height speakers and the surround height speakers. And the 10.1 improved upon the 9.1 by adding a ceiling or top channel speaker right at the middle center of the room, also called the Voice of God speaker. Then in 2010, they improved upon this, creating an 11.1 variation. Still again, the five traditional ear level speakers, front, left, center, and side surrounds. The uh, height layer included not just a front and side height speakers, but now a front center height speaker, as well as the top center or voice of God speaker. They also introduced in 2010 
the Oral 13.1 standard. And this brought in, finally, the rear surround speakers, probably to um, kind of fit in with what Dolby had been doing and DTS having rear surrounds, and for people that also support those configurations to make use of them, not just sitting there dormant doing nothing, but to have those speakers active, the 13.1 speaker layout gave you that. That also had the front height center speaker and the top voice of God speaker. So uh, still on the height, you had the front and the side height speakers. Now those side height speakers, I think in a lot of cases still get mounted at the rear of the room, but the prescription is those are side height speakers. Now at some point, Oral 3D brought in, and I don't know the date for this, a special version of 11.1. And now we're showing this now with the way we represent the speaker layouts as uh, ripe wave audio, and we have been doing for a couple years now. They had this special version of Oral 11.1, which they call a 7.1 plus four heights. So take a traditional seven uh, speaker layout, three in the front, two on the sides, two in the rear, like what they deliver with Oral 13.1, give you four heights, but not require the center front height and the center middle ceiling speaker or top center voice of God speaker. Those aren't present. So everything but the center speakers in the front uh, height and the top center, those are not present. So that's the variations that we see out there, and not every receiver and processor that supports Oral 3D, because they just mainly show that checkbox. We have Oral 3D, but they don't tell you which formats that they support, what speaker layouts from Oral 3D they support, at least very clearly. In some cases, we can get into the manual and we get that indication. In other cases, it's still very vague. What I'm going to show you now is our best interpretation based off of units that we brought in house, plus the manuals that we have, their websites, and for the rest, we kind of make assumptions. Let's take a look at the first grouping. Now, the first grouping here essentially is these 11 point X channel receivers and, and processors. And these are usually at the sweet spot, you know, advertised as 7.x.4 or better for supporting Dolby Atmos. And Oral 3D comes along for the ride. And in most of these cases, what they're supporting is that similar speaker layout, that specialized Oral 11.1, the 7.1 uh, for the ear level and the four heights with no top center or height front center speaker. Uh, the one exception is when we looked into the Morantz AV7706 manual, they don't explain if they support that specialized 11.1. Now this came out probably before then, uh, I wondered if there's been a firmware update that allows for it, but nothing that indicates it that I could find. So all of them support this 11.1 special uh, configuration, which is really a mirror of the Dolby Atmos 7.x.4 configuration. Now there's a couple of models out there that support more than a 7.x.4 Dolby configuration namely the Monoprice HTP-1, the Arcam models, whether that's the AVR-2131 or AV-41, the Audio Control Concert and Maestro series, and the JBL Synthesis. This is their own technology based off of the Arcam, same design at least, SDP-58 and 38. Those all can do a 9.1.6, which means that they can support front wide channels and three rows of heights. Now here's the thing, 
There's nothing in their manuals that states that they're able to do a top center channel, although supporting three rows of heights, technically they have that speaker position, middles, uh, that they could they could use. Uh, they have the number of channels, but as far as their middle position on the ceiling, they've got it left and right, not a center, and they don't have anything for top front center. Uh, they have the front wide speakers, but unfortunately, Oral 3D doesn't have a front wide in their defined speaker layouts. So while you get those extra channels and the capability of doing front wides and maybe a third row of uh, ceiling speakers, that can't be leveraged, at least from what I can tell from the manual. Eventually, we will bring in an RCAM uh, processor or receiver, hopefully by the end of the year, and we will know for sure, but I can't get them give them credit for any of those formats from Oral 3D that require top center or front height center. That's the 10.1 uh, configuration is the first one that has the top center. And then the 11.1 and the 13.1 also require that front height center. So no credit for that on those despite their large number of speaker counts. And this is because a lot of those channels of the 16 channel processors are used for subwoofers as well. So uh, that is a, another uh, reason there. So looking a little deeper into this, now the other models, the uh, they all support 9.1, whether that's explicitly stated in their manuals or implied because they have the channels and they already support like 11.1, uh, those are the the AVR11, the Yamaha RX A8A6A, the RX A8A, the Onkyo TXRZ70, the Pioneer VSX LX805, and the Integra DRX8.4. I would say we can assume that they support 9.1 because they support the special 11.1. Uh, but we have not seen an update to their manual on their website uh, for Integra, Onkyo, and Pioneer. We haven't seen those units uh, hit the street with that support, with the firmware that supports Oral 3D. So we don't really know for those models. We're taking a guess. Um, we don't really know if it supports 11.1. So it'll be very interesting. Maybe we'll be taking things away from those, or maybe we'll be adding once we know the details. The Marantz 7706, is also unique because in its manual, it talks about support for Oral 10.1. So it does support top center voice of God with this, just not officially stated for the Oral 11.1. So it'd be nice to be able to check that off. If you know for sure, let me know. And that really speaks for all of these. You know, they all essentially have the Oral 9.1 and the Special 11.1, uh, with a couple of exceptions. And uh, that just means you don't have the top center or the front height center. Now, the next wave of products, the next slide of products I'm going to show you, we can talk about a few more things. The Newer Denon and Marantz products, we're talking about the AVR X3800H, the X4800H, and the Marantz Cinema 50, Cinema 40, ranging from $1,700 to $3,500. These are 7.4.4 receivers, uh, and therefore, they can do the 11.1 oral special, 7.1 and 4 heights, uh, explicitly stated in the manual, uh, they can also do the standard 11.1, uh, this with the top center and the front height center speakers, but not with the rear surrounds as defined by 11.1. We assume that it can also handle 10.1 and 9.1, but no 13.1 speaker uh, possibility with those products. The first products from Denon Marantz that support 13.1 are the AVR X6700H and the AVR X8500HA. These explicitly state 
13.1 uh, support, and so does the Marantz SR8015 and the AV8805A. Now, interesting to note here that both Den and Marantz for these four products haven't released replacement products for them in their portfolio. So when we see the uh, announcements usually coming in September from Den and Marantz, we'll be looking to see if they have uh, replacements for these and that they can handle like things like HDMI 2.1 the way it should as the Cinema 40 and 50 and other newer models uh, have implemented as along with some other enhancement. But for now being, you have to use these older products to get it at this price point with Oral 13.1 from Den and Marantz, uh, except for some flagships. We'll talk about that in a second here. Then you have the Macintosh MX-123, which is largely based off of the Marantz AV8805A. Now you pay a lot more for the Macintosh version. Of course, it's things that really make it a Macintosh. Uh, whether it's worth this much more money is could be a debatable item. But in this case, it's got that same level of support as those Denon Marantz uh, models above it. So all based off of that same firmware. Now, the first new product that we see from Denon, the AVR A1H, their flagship, $6,500. This is capable of doing a 9.4.6 configuration. And this is supporting all of the oral 3D formats. Uh, of course, it's implied that it will do 10.1 and 11.1 special, but not explicitly called out by the manual. Same thing with the Marantz AV10. You pay $500 more for that. That's $7,000 unit. And it's a processor separate with no amplifiers built in, but it supports them all in the same way. Now, moving up in price, you have the Lingdorf MP60 2.1, which is HDMI 2.1 version. This is a $15,500 unit. And the Macintosh MX180 that's derived from that Lingdorf, uh, that's $17,000. Also supporting all these formats, we believe, but the only format that we can gleam is supported just by the listing of speakers that they say you can configure and the number of channels this has, we assume 13.1, although it's not really even explicitly stated for those, uh, and then assume for the others. So you really do have to jump up to this grouping of products that are a little more expensive to get a full oral 13.1 configuration. And you have to spend at least $3,000, at least that's the list price, for let's say the Denon 6700H, but that doesn't have all the uh, HDMI stuff sorted out. So uh, then you're you know, moving up in price from there. Uh, so to get a modern product that supports Oral 13.1, uh, you are uh, looking at the Denon AVR A1H. You're spending at least $6,500 for something that is fully flushed out with HDMI 2.1 and has Oral 13.1. So it costs a lot to get the full oral experience. Uh, most of us are going to have to settle with the special version of 11.1, uh, the seven base layer, four heights uh, configuration, and that's a lot more accessible uh, with the uh, lowest price unit here being $2,400 and that gets you into Oral 3D. Before fully closing off on this video, I do wanna mention back on the immersive formats compared, the 2023 edition, uh, we did show you which model supported all the immersive formats. And there are some here listed for Denon and Marantz, Macintosh, Storm, and Trinop. Those are the only brands that support all the formats. Uh, you can go back to that video and hear those details if you're willing to forego at least one uh, supported format, particularly DTSX Pro, which is really hasn't been too strong in support. Uh, you have a lot more options for checking most of the boxes 
in some cases, you're giving up IMAX and Enhance and, and Dolby Vision. Uh, but those are some remaining things that you could glean from our other video on immersive formats. So there are a few brands I didn't cover in this presentation, the Brightstand, Datastat, Focal, Storm Audio, Theta Digital, and Trinoth Audio. These are all kind of special, you know, we're talking of close to around 20,000 and up for a lot of these models, uh, at least over $10,000 when you go into it. And they're very customizable. Uh, we could do a deeper dive on that, but right now I'm handling more of the mass markets through in uh, the the Lingdorf and the uh, MX180 from Macintosh here versus kind of a transitional because those products are less configurable, less uh, uh, than than those other brands. So uh, this is where we're leaving off with this. So what are your thoughts? If you are a oral 3D enthusiast, I know there's several that listen to this channel uh, that are. Uh, where do you feel is necessary? to uh, really enjoy an oral 3D experience. Oral 9.1, 10.1, 11.1, 11.1 1 special, 13.1. What do you think is necessary? Uh, what is your preferences? You know, is it worth going to a real 11.1 .1 versus 11.1 .1 special? These are questions I have and I'm still learning and I don't have all these speaker configurations currently. It's something we're evolving to eventually in our theater. So that thought would be great. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. If you want to take your experience to the next level, consider going to www.patreon.com slash RipeWave. We have three membership tiers now at three, five, and ten dollars uh, and it gives you access at the highest level to all these slides. Uh, sometimes there's even a couple extra slides that we didn't use in the video. You can always do a one-time donation with the thanks button, and we invite all of you to hit that bell notification so you will be notified when the next video is posted. Until then, keep evolving your audio experience.